Good morning, folks. We now know which of the CME models was correct. We'll go deeper on Earth's unpreparedness mentioned yesterday and hit several other top science news to end the week. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours was mostly quiet. Filament release bottom right was the filament we saw heading off away from Earth yesterday. Otherwise, no eruptions in this direction and coronal holes dominating the south. Solar wind is still calm. In fact, solar wind speed is bottoming out under 300 kilometers per second, which is relatively anemic. There's been no impact yet, and that means we can look at NOAA's forecast and say it was incorrect. NASA is still forecasting the impacts to occur later today and into tomorrow. And again, forecast to be weak with only moderate auroral enhancement. Taking a look at the GOES view of geocolor and lightning overlay. Bit of a warm-up underway in the United States, but the wonky jet stream patterns continue. Another dip incoming here, bringing more snow and cold in a couple days. Without the northern vortex adding to the situation, it won't be record cold. As the northern vortex breaks down, the south is gearing up to hit its strong season here in the next month or two. We are off to Antarctica, where new radar imaging is taking their ability to scope fine detail at Antarctica to a new level. This is, of course, important for the elite so they can pick a good spot when the new age begins and this continent is um, latitudinally shifted, so to speak. Seriously, though, it is quite impressive how good the technology is getting, even if it is focused somewhere nobody lives. Up next, folks, three comments and at least that many emails yesterday asking if China's geoelectric program is better than the United States after I had said it was the best in the world and it was still wildly unprepared. Yes, there's no question they are behind. This is mostly a function of being later to the game and there not being the robust geomagnetic monitoring over decades, leaving them unprepared even using a two-model ensemble. They are obviously trying to make progress like with their monitoring of geoelectric surges, but they are in the brainstorm stages of how to monitor it, let alone how to make a model and then make them work for them. Quick eye candy here is NGC 1097, truly looks like an eye in space. Gorgeous barred spiral takes us into space news as we come to a fun one here on why techno signatures should be more numerous than biosignatures and more unambiguous. It is the first publication suggesting that the Drake Equation's greatest failure is the lack of conceptualization that alien technology could outlive their actual civilization by billions of years. And last but not least, NASA apparently looking in their crystal ball or Someone stole all their calendars. And certainly only a short sidestep from the techno signatures. Biosignatures on Mars are about to be captured if they've ever existed there. The rover has shut down all other science operations and is doing whatever the rover version of fast as possible is. He is in an all out sprint. I remember reporting on this years ago and it's what we've been waiting for. Arrival at the Delta and the potential to find life. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got our new Fly on the Wall podcast episode coming today in a few hours. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.